Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. A macro is a little program that you create in a visual environment that runs a series or set of operations in a specified order. For example, an access macro could check the value of a form field and then open a corresponding report based on the value of the field. When we write macros, we will need to know both the actions, what to do for each step in the macro, and the arguments, which are additional settings that specify more exactly what we want each of the actions to do. To make macro creation easier, access comes with a macro design window. You can select it by clicking Macros in the Objects pane, and then clicking New in the database container. The window consists of two panes. The upper pane is called the Action pane, and contains a design grid similar to Table Design. This design grid can contain up to four columns. The Action and Comment columns are displayed by default. In the Action column, you click into the first available row and use the drop-down to select one of the many actions you want the macro to perform. And this would be the first action that it would perform when the macro is run. So here I'm going to choose Open a Report. In the lower section, called the Action Arguments pane, you will enter any additional settings that the selected action needs in order to function. You'll place them into the appropriate fields in the Action Arguments section. Depending on the currently selected action, the arguments will vary considerably. Some actions simply require that you define more arguments than others do. Many have default arguments that you can change if needed, such as this open report. For the view, it wants us to choose print, design, or print preview. It defaults to print, but we could select print preview by simply clicking into it and using the drop down to change it if needed. Also, some arguments have no default value, such as filter name here, but instead here you would be allowed to enter your own expression. Also, some arguments are required for an action to be performed. For example, if we selected the open report action, then you must specify the name of the report to open, or it would have no purpose. Access displays help about the currently selected argument at the right of the Action Arguments pane when you have a particular argument selected. So if you're needing help on filling in an argument, you can click into the field and read the pane to the right. If you need more assistance, you can press F1 on your keyboard and a help window will appear to lend you even more assistance in specifying the arguments needed in order to complete the selected action. And this can be very helpful when programming macro behavior. Also, you'll see which one of the selected arguments are required, usually at the right pane. Now once you've completed your action and filled in all the required arguments for the action, you would move into the next line of your macro in the design grid above and repeat the process by selecting the next action you wanted the macro to perform and then fill in the arguments for that as well. And when you're finished, you'll have your completed macro. It's just that easy to create. Now the other column always displayed in a macro is the comment column, into which you can type a brief description of the purpose of the action being performed. You can also optionally display the macro name column, which we can turn on and off by clicking the button for macro name in the toolbar at the top. You may also display the condition column by also clicking that button in the toolbar at the top. Macro name allows you to type in a name for a section of specific actions within a macro. The conditions column allows you to specify under what conditions you would want the action to be performed. Now once you've created your macro, you should save it so that you can run it in the future when needed. When you're creating database programs, they're usually designed to be run multiple times, so give it a name that'll help you remember its function within the database. Now running a macro is easy. You select the macro from the list displayed in the database container, and then just click the Run button in the database container to run the macro.
Now after testing them, you may have to edit the macros to tweak little problems that you may notice. Another way to run macros in Access is to select Tools from the menu bar, roll down to Macro, and select Run Macro from the side menu. That brings up the Run Macro dialog box where you can use the drop down to select which macro you want to run and then click OK to the right to run it. Editing a macro is very easy as well. Just select the name of the macro to edit in the database container and click the Design button to display the design view of the macro. So here you can change the macro actions and arguments as needed and then save it and try and run it again. Once it's operating appropriately, you may want to consider adding the macro to a Command Buttons on Click event within one of your forms so that you can open a form, click a button, and run your macro. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.